Hey, good afternoon, John. This is Denzel. How are you? Doing great, doing great. Thanks for booking time in my calendar. I appreciate you sending your spreadsheet in advance along with uh, the two main topics you'd like to cover today. That's really going to help, so appreciate that. Uh, I, see, I see this is our, our very first call together. So what I'd like to do is give you the floor, a couple minutes, to just share a little bit about yourself, what you do for work, how you found me, um, and really any other uh, primary things that you'd like to discuss on this call. I know whole life insurance, IUL, and then the first lien HELOC. I know those are like the primary things you want to discuss, but if there are other things, I don't want to give you the opportunity to kind of bring those up now and I'll be sure to address it. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, sharing that. And so when it, when it comes to the whole life, the IUL, you like, as you mentioned, you listen to uh, Doug Andrew, read his book, Laser, I think it's called Laser Fun. Then uh, James Barber, whom I, I like James Barber because he does both, you know, whole life IUL kind of touches on both strategies, what, what he uses them for. Um, and then I see you, uh, when did you, when did you find me? Because you said you found Velocity Banking three years ago, but when, when did you hit my channel? Okay, got it. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, as, as I'm looking at the spreadsheet from, from what I see here, like, yeah, you've done a pretty good job saving money, have some retirement accounts built up. Uh, on the debt, we really don't have anything that's holding us back in terms of in terms of the debt that you are servicing, right? We got the primary residence and we got the solar panels. Um, and then really it's just those two credit cards, which aren't, in, in you know, so difficult to get rid of. Um, there's definitely a world where we could look into a first or second position HELOC. I'll, I'll definitely send you a list of banks that I know of that offer that product. But I always tell my clients and my audience to do additional research on your own, see what you can find, that you can kind of draw some comparisons with. And then kind of we're essentially shopping and competing for the best best offer that we can find out there. And sometimes that means a second lien over a first lien or a first lien over a second lien, All right? Typically your first lien HELOCs are gonna have uh, more closing costs, higher rate, but obviously the advantage is you get a much bigger credit line and it removes the first lien mortgage completely, which means you now have access to that, that mortgage payment is freed up and you're really only required to pay the interest. Right? And if the strategy was to just have all money flowing in and out of that and essentially using your home to, to leverage for other investments, then there could be something said there. But if it's a matter of, I have a desire to pay this thing off um, faster, then sometimes a, a second lien can help us do that, especially in this environment right now with, with these intro rates that are being offered on the second lien HELOCs are, are quite attractive. And it kind of gives us a nice, gives us a nice head start. And then we can always transition to the first lien when that makes sense. Then on the, on the same front, since we, we have capital, we've got savings, a little over 50K. You've got the IRA that got rolled over into your ownership and you have to pay the taxes on it, and then you're gonna you're gonna cash it out. So you're gonna have a, a a net amount in the six figures, and you're like, okay, before I just you know blow all this money, how do I make good decisions with it? Um, there's 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 a couple of ways. I I've dealt with this in the past with a few other clients, and they really liked this idea of being able to fully maximize any type of cash windfall that comes into our economy and it's also a good way of coming up with a decision making what I call a financial decision making process to allow you the the co confidence personally to to make decisions with the money that you know will will bear good fruit and not just relying on anyone even like myself to kind of tell you what to do with the money um, everyone's going to have their 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 bias oh you should do this oh you should throw your money here and yeah, invest in here and put a little here, that sort of thing. Whereas I like to just build a template for clients where it's like, okay, if, if you agree with this protocol that we put in place, then every decision you make moving forward has been calculated, thought through, and even if it didn't work out, we knew what the risk were for, for, the, for that. Uh, and, we'd, and we'd still be okay. 
right? So to give you a, a little a standardized template example, and then this could obviously be customized. Um, so I'll just look at the inherited IRA, right? Uh, you said 200, 212,000 is in there, right? And that's, that's what got um, left for you. Now the taxes, um, if I'm not mistaken, there's, I think it's taxed differently. I don't know if it's taxed based on your current ordinary income. I could be wrong, but let's say it is, and I'm going to guess they take anywhere from 25 to 30%, right? Is that like a, would you say that's accurate what you're thinking? So say 30%. So 30% is 63,600, right? So 212, just minus 65K. Now, what I'd like to do is connect you uh, to my tax team because there might be a tax play there to help us reduce that, that liability, that hit. And if, we, and if there's something that we could do that, that meant us recovering or recapturing an extra 10% of that money, in my opinion, that would that would trump uh, uh, other investment opportunities that we could look at or other things that we could do with that money. If it if it simply meant okay, before we do that investment, what if we did this, and it lowered our tax liability by this, and that meant an extra twenty thousand net, fifteen thousand net, I would be very very interested in in hearing what a CPA would have to say about that. So I would love to just, you know kind of before we make any moves with that money would love to connect you to someone if you don't already have someone um, but my tax team is really awesome they really know what they're doing they've helped me save a lot of money in taxes and I think that's just a smart thing to do a nice you know second opinion there um, cool so I'll, I'll put that on my notes here I'll do that for you along with so so far I got I'm gonna send you a list of banks that do first lien HELOCs and then I'm gonna give you the connection to my CPA book a call and you know have a conversation let them know the situation that you're in and see if they can help so let's us let's assume we didn't do that and we pay the taxes and now we have maybe 140 to 150 net and that's now been taxed so it's, that's just net cash available so I'll just kind of round down say 140 grand what I tell people is say okay um, me personally I would take 40% off the top, that's 56,000, and I can put 10% toward giving, 10% saving, 10% investing, and 10% spend. We're all human, so whenever we get a windfall of cash, typically we find, we just find a way to spend that money. So giving ourselves permission to spend, I think is super valuable to have that uh, awareness this way it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to feel bad about taking this trick or going here or spending money here because I already set aside funds for it and the rest is being, is being stored for future. So yeah, I, I think it, it was super helpful for another couple, husband and wife, the husband's mom passed away and he received, I think about 300 grand. And I just said, look, what, what, what would it look like um, if you were to spend some of this money? And, and not feel any kind of shame or guilt, you know, during this mourning process, but knowing that there's things that are just gonna come up. And this is a couple that maybe just, they haven't been on a vacation in a while. They've got kids, the whole thing. They just, you know, there's a lot of stress that, that can occur in this, in this time. And we don't realize how quickly the money can go, right? So it's like, okay, what would, look, what would it look like if we just, said, okay, here's a percentage guilt-free spending. So in this case, 10% would be 14,000 that we can just set aside in, a, in, a, in another checking account and just say, okay, boom, here's what it is. If there's anything that we'd like to do as a family, we can go ahead and do that. If there's anything we wanna do to, to celebrate mom or, or travel, meet some other family, here's that money, guilt-free spending, right? The other, the other 14, cool. The other, the other 14,000, would be um, saving. And I think looking at what you're already doing, which is Whole Life IUL, they're two different products, um, but similar, right? I think a, a Whole Life insurance product is the better place to save money simply due to the fact that, simply due to the fact that an IUL 
cannot provide the same guarantees that a whole life can. No matter what any, no matter what any guru or content creator says, when we look at the facts of, of the policy and the contracts, if we look at any IUL of the illustrations and you ask the agent for the guarantees, can you show me a guaranteed illustration performance of this IUL? I've never seen an IUL that doesn't lapse based on the guarantees. So, so that simply means that we're betting that this IUL will outperform what a whole life would, right? Because that's pretty much how IULs get compared is they get compared to the performance of a whole life. And when we look at the illustration, IUL always pretty much outperforms a whole life on the non-guaranteed illustrations. They're usually illustrating about an average rate of return of about maybe six, six and a half percent is usually what I see. Um, but, what, but what we don't see in that average is years that the IUL produces a 0% return, right? Because typically the, the IUL is your, your, your guarantee is zero. So your floor is zero, meaning you, you won't lose money um, in, in your cash value, which is, which is true. We didn't lose money, but we, we lost the opportunity that year to gain more money. So you could make the opportunity that, you could make the argument that you did lose money because we still had to pay life insurance costs that year, management fees, admin fees, things like that, even though we didn't get a gain in inside of the policy. And if you had enough of those years where you earn zero over a long period of time, that can definitely cause the policy to become a lapse. So that's just something to keep in mind where it's like, okay, if I'm, if I'm willing to take that bet, because I'm thinking that IUL could you know, outperform if, you know, I design it a certain way that this thing could uh, have the potential to, to outperform. Well, I would put investment dollars toward that. I would put money that I'm okay with, with the possibility of maybe losing for a higher gain, right? Versus, versus a whole life. It's like a whole life's going to do what it's going to do. It's going to illustrate what it's going to illustrate. You're going to have these guarantees. Uh, and it's a safe, secure, tax-free, liquid compounding account to access money and um, you're essentially doing what an IUL would do, right? But with the whole life, we would be borrowing money and then doing an investment ourselves rather than relying on the insurance company to do it for us by putting it in the S&P 500, you know, or in, in an index. Does that make sense? <clears throat> there you go. I, I, for me, I think it is, yeah, yeah. For that second part, for me, it's more about the security. And when we when we do the research on the infinite banking concept and process, um, its origin is using whole life. And the idea of the infinite banking concept itself is being able to borrow against the the cash value and, and either finance, self finance purchases, equipment, self finance investment opportunities, and then create this positive arbitrage over a long period of time, maybe not essentially in, in the beginning years, but over a long period of time, absolutely do that. And then it's a, and then that's the safety of this money is secure. It's not going anywhere. It's safer than putting it in a bank. And I never have to worry about the, the possibility of my policy lapsing because of lack of performance in the policy. Um, and, and it gives you more control to kind of do what you want with the policy, whereas in an, in an IUL, when your money is in the cash value, it's mirroring the index, right? The S&P 500. And so we're betting on the stock market to do its thing for, for our benefit. But that comes with fees, that comes with costs, right? It's, just, it's almost like hiring a financial advisor, right? But in this case, with an IUL, you also get a death benefit with it. So yeah, so let's say, of, of that 40% we, we set aside, 10% is 14,000. That could go towards whole life insurance. And obviously this number could be more, but at a minimum, it's like, boom, 14,000 go right into um, savings. On the investment side of things, um, when it comes to investing, there's, there's different categories that we could look at. We could look at the type of investment that requires none of you and it's purely based on the commodity or the asset to perform. That's one type of an investment. Then, then there's the type of investment where you're involved, like a real estate deal or, or trading Forex or crypto or stocks or options or shorting, right? Like 
now you're involved in that investment. And then there's the type of investment that doesn't have to do with an ROI or an asset or a commodity, but it's more of investing in you. Like, who is John? What does John want? What does he desire? You know, what does the next 10 years look like? And, and that type of investing could be purchasing um, books, could be going on masterminds, retreats, personal development type work. Um, could be in the, in, in, the, in the spiritual work of things, um, could be in the health side of things. Like, you know what, let me, let me go do some, uh, an extensive blood panel on my health and see where all my deficiencies are and where can I improve and where can I supplement. Maybe, you know, go see a doctor that, that is, a, is a functional medicine doctor, not your regular PCP, but like someone that doesn't even take insurance, you know, um, and, and, and kind of just look into how do I optimize myself for the next 10, 20 years. And so that, we don't know what the ROI is on that, um, but that's just a whole different type of investing. And I, I feel like it's, it's important to bring that up because so many people look at, you know, one metric, which is highest ROI and, and cash flow, right? What's the, what's the best rate of return I can get for my money. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think there's a world where maybe sometimes the highest ROI may not be the right thing for you, but sometimes it could be the, the highest ROI on joy, on happiness, on peace, like what increases your, your mood, your day-to-day, -day, your desire to want to work more um, or work in a specific area or is it ministry. So those, giving yourself that opportunity to just think on it um, and kind of work with someone like myself through like counseling, coaching, that, that sort of thing. I think, uh, and I've witnessed it really with other clients, very, very um, just impactful, just from my perspective, seeing someone go through that, where it's like, yeah, no one's ever, no one's ever talked to me like that before. No one's ever asked me those, those um, surface level questions, but allow me to go eight, 10 layers deep to really get to the root of you know, why I do the things that I do or what my true passion is, that, that sort of thing. So we have a unique opportunity now where we've got some capital to really, you know, kind of open that up a little bit. So that's just something to uh, uh, think on. And then the giving, the 10% the, the of the giving is completely optional. Um, all of these are obviously optional. These are, this is just a template uh, to really think on. So if that was the case, right, we already just set 40% aside and we gave it a purpose, 140 grand minus 56,000, we're left with 84,000. With the, with the 84,000, we can, we can say, okay, um, how much do I need to have at least six months to 12 months worth of expenses if I am to potentially lose my job, right? If I lose my mainstream of income. So if we look at your current cost of living, we've got so from that 84,000, according to the spreadsheet, we spend roughly 6,702.49 every month times six would be 40,000 to 1494 times that by two, 12 months would be 80,000 or 29,88. So anywhere between 40 and 80 could get stored in, we could either temporarily hold that in a high yield savings account, but over time, simply shift that into tax advantage accounts. My three favorite, my three favorite are the whole life and HSA, if we're eligible, health savings account, and then the, and then the Roth IRA. The Roth IRA, we're able to contribute 7,000 a month, uh, a year to that. The HSA, we can contribute 4,150 to that. And then whole life is pretty much based on your age, health, and finances. So in, in a sense, it's almost unlimited in terms of how much you can put in there, but not quite. But, but it's way more than all other tax advantage re retirement accounts um, out there. In the marketplace so what i what i tell my clients is it's it's great to save money but it's all about where we save it is even more important because of just understanding how the economy works the devaluation of currency being able to have our dollars in tax-free advantage accounts is going to be huge and and in accounts where where it can compound right so it's like there's the account and then there's the strategy that comes with it. If we, correct, and right, 
So yeah, so, so what you could do is we could say, all right, if we went with the 40,000, for example, we could, ha we could have that 40 over time, doesn't have to be all at once, but you can have that money over time go into whole life insurance. And then that, those, same, those same dollars could be borrowed out of the policy to then be funded in an HSA or Roth IRA. And if, and if, we, and if we went a little higher on, on the emergency fund where it's like, okay, I wanna make sure that I always have six months worth liquid and then anything above six months, I can simply have it in these tax advantage accounts. Worst case scenario, if I ever needed to dip into those accounts, I can get a margin loan, like a line of credit uh, to, to borrow against if I needed to, but that would be like a, a worst, worst case scenario. I, I don't see that really happening because there's other things that we can pull from. You know, In addition to this 140 net that I'm underestimating, there's still more cash there, and then there's the cash on hand that you already have, and then there's the cash flow that you're producing every month. So, you know, a lot would have to happen basically before we start essentially liquidating these these um, these assets. So, so that pension that you have is that with your current position, or was that from another? Ah, okay, okay, got it. And and that money is just sitting there right now. Okay. So, so what's going through my mind, how many kids do you have again? You have three kids and then, you know, wife. So family of five. Um, what's going through my mind, I think well, everything that I know, if, you know, if I had to fast forward to being 52, um, you know, my mind, I, I still have a lot of energy, 52 years old, still working, you know, healthy, got this family. For me, I like the idea of having guaranteed lifetime income streams in the event any anything happens to me as of right now i'm the breadwinner i've got three kids and a wife um so i'm i'm the one that's producing this this income instead of getting a lump sum of money i could take a look at the the pension packages the the pension offers of the the distributions right i can i can connect you to someone that is well versed in social security, pensions, annuities, retirement accounts, that, that sort of thing. Um, there, there might, it might make sense to say, okay, what, if, what would it look like if we held on to it and just started taking a stream of income from it now that would never run out? And you could make the argument that from, you know, if I live from 52 all the way to my 80s, 90s, that 205 would have, would have given you way more than 205 over that period of time, right? So I, I like that idea of having those two different types of income. There's guaranteed lifetime income. The only guaranteed lifetime income vehicles out there that are actually truly guaranteed is a pension, annuity, and social security. Um, and then the, the next thing that's the closest to guarantee would be a whole life policy. And then the next after that would be like your other qualified retirement account, right? Your 401ks, IRAs, things like that. Um, so those are like lifetime income streams that I, I personally would not like to interrupt. And then you've got your asset income streams, real estate, a business, you know, cryptos and trading and any other skill or work that you continue to do uh, throughout your life. If, if we were to cash it out, let's say we did take a lump sum up front, we could say, all right, what would it look like if I not only insured myself with a whole life, but also got one on wife and also got one on three kids kind of, kind of distribute. Everybody is now, everyone's human life value is now secured, protected, and maybe putting that putting a, a good amount of that money in a trust, kind of protecting it in that sense. And then, and then making investments that are based on, on future for the next generation. And maybe we just keep a portion of it, say anywhere from 10 to 30% of that 205. Maybe we keep it for ourselves today. And that helps us in that category of investing, but investing for now, like, okay, what are some investments that I can do now that can produce ROI today? that would increase my productivity in the marketplace, my, would increase my skills, 
talents, gifts that could cre create more cash flow today, right? And then tapping tapping into that personal development and figuring out your passion, that, that sort of thing. I think that would just give you more capital to do that if we were to simply be done with the, the pension. The risk of cashing that out along with the inherited IRA is if I were to you know lose my mainstream of income um, or have an inability to work for some reason, disabled or something like that, an injury that just really uh, prevents you from working, then there, that money's only gonna last for, for so long, right? Those are some things to think on. That's great, great, great thoughts. I know, yeah. And, and I believe, I believe that there's definitely some tax strategy out there that if we, if we took the time in advance to really think about it, where it's like, oh wow, yeah, I could probably you know, recapture so much of that hard-earned money and, and not pay tax on tax, because that's what would be kind of happening in this situation. You're getting taxed and then taxed again, like on the same dollars, it's gonna hurt. Um, so yeah, those are some things we can think about. I think even with just the inherited money alone, we can really accomplish a lot. So we can almost say, all right, let maybe maybe we can just table the pension discussion because it's it's going to be there no matter what, um, and we can kind of focus our attention on this inherited money and you know optimize for future, maximize for today, for right now. Figure out what's if there's a tax play to reduce the liability on that, and I think definitely solving for insuring everybody in the household. That doesn't hurt at all. And we can come up with a number for each person. I would I would assume for you and wife, the numbers would be higher and then kids, it could be lower. And then we teach them. That's 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 actually more important. They they know what this is so that, you know, the first couple of years you're funding it. And then once they have the the awareness, the knowledge, and they're like, okay, I wanna take this over or I wanna contribute myself, and then they can take it over and fund it for themselves. And because they're young in their twenties. In their 20s, the insurance cost is, say, more than half the expense that it would be for. Right. Okay. So here's what I would like to do um, is if you could email me your uh, wife's first name, last name, kids, first name, last name, um, and date of birth of everyone, including yourself, I can go ahead and pull, pull up, drop some illustrations for you to take a look at, and I'll do like conservative ones and then i'll show a little more aggressive funding because of the amount of capital that we have we could say all right what would it look like if i paid in a little bit more the first couple of years and then maybe dialed back in the later years and then i'll do the reverse showing what it would look like if we just did a consistent number over a long period of time and you kind of get to you know weigh that for yourself if you if you do have any iul designs already from um, Doug's camp or, or James Barber, um, we can also, you know, jump on a Zoom and kind of like put them together and look at the, the comparisons. So we have all the facts in front of us and we can make a, a good decision in terms of which direction we want to go in. Yeah, so first name, last name, date of birth. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll just put that as a reminder in, in the email that I'm putting together for you. So after this call, you get an email from me, just kind of recapping what we discussed and then we can have a follow-up I'd say in about a week um, to to go over the the life insurance because that alone will be about a one to two month journey where I, I really like to give my clients that that time to you know have the confidence in what they're looking at not just relying on what I'm saying but it's like no you really do get what's happening here you understand all the costs and fees and uh, risk if any involved of what we'll be doing understanding the strategy the different points of views that are out there um, that sort of thing i think that'll be very beneficial because again i think we're in a we're in a good period right now where we can really take the time there's nothing really pressing i mean if anything you could just say all right let me just be done with these 20 plus percent credit cards um let, let me let me ask is one of those credit cards being used to run bills and expenses and then you just pay it off each month? Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. I like that. Yeah, so if you wanted to like have like a little bit of a clean slate with those with those two cards, you can do something like that and then kind of restart it, get it going again. In terms of the second lien HELOC, there's plenty of equity in the home to do that. Uh, we can probably get like a 30, 40K 
um, home equity line of credit in the, in the second, second position. We can look at banks together, do some research. Um, no need to jump the gun on that either, right? We can contact these banks, get all the information that, that we need uh, before moving forward. I would like to take a few minutes for you to just talk a little bit about, you know, just the, the career that you've been in. And then if this is something that you just, like you could do this for the rest of your life, or is there some other opportunity out there that you would really like to do? Or if it's just a matter of you'd love to get invested in these different areas and, and create streams of income in that regard. Yeah, pays the bills, gives you a lifestyle, you know, that you have and you want some interaction. Cool. Okay. With, with, yeah. And would this be within the same company that you're working at now? Oh, okay. Okay. Completely different company. Got it. Okay. So, so you're in the works, you're in the process of that. Okay, cool. And then let me ask, um, you know, for you, what brings, what brings joy, you know, happiness? Is there a, a hobby or a passion that you really like doing or would really like to get into? I like it. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. This just knowing, yeah, no, knowing that detail right there really helps me cater the types of financial investments that we would get into that would allow us to, to do that. Because again, most people, when they look at investing, they're looking at highest ROI, but sometimes that comes with, sometimes that comes with levels of risk that can literally take your eyes away from the mission, the, the, the vision, the lifestyle that, that you want to live. Um, you know, say for example, you're all invested in stocks and bonds, mutual funds, and all you see is charts, red charts and green charts and candlesticks and ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. That causes a massive amount of stress for people where they're like, wait, am I, am I safe to pull this money out? Is, is, do I have enough money to pull this money now? Am I going to, is the money going to run out? That's that sort of thing versus, versus getting into steady types of investments, even types of investments that have to do with the thing that you would love to be doing. Like what if there was a type of business or a type of opportunity or a type of investment or commodity or an asset that was in the realm of flying airplanes. And, and if, if you were an early investor in that company, or if you were an early, you just got invested in these two, three different projects and it paid dividends or stream of income and it was steady and it, and it provided enough or more than enough income to literally just study learn how to fly planes, get licensed, then fly planes. And like, that's your way of having joy in addition to spending time with, you know, family, um, in the church doing ministry work. And it's like, you've, you've got these guaranteed streams. So it's like the, the pension, the social security, the whole life, the annuities, the retirement accounts. And then like, those are, are like the most for sure, types of income streams that will benefit us years from now. And then the type of investing that we do for now will, will provide the lifestyle that we want to live in the, that we want to engage in. And if we had to put a time frame on it, uh, I would say five to seven, seven to 10 years or less, I think is very, very realistic and obviously could be done much sooner. It's just, all dependent on the, the different types of moves that, that we make and the accountability that you put in place for yourself, which that right there, I think is the one metric that is also very, very hard to measure is accountability. I've been able to witness people just do really awesome things. I really didn't have anything to do with it other than they just kept booking phone calls and they had someone, they had someone to check in with that was outside of family friends where, where the conversation's different. You know, if you, if, if you go to spouse, you go to kids, you go to a coworker, you go to a friend, it's, it's a different conversation versus someone that's like, I'm not invested, you know, in, in that regard. Like, I don't, I don't see you every day. So it's like, I get to ask questions that aren't about necessarily your character. I don't have the, uh, the knowledge of who John is the last 10, 20, 30 years, because sometimes that can be, sometimes that can actually be a hindrance to receiving the type of insight you would need. 
because someone feels bad about letting you know something or, or sharing with you something or sometimes also friends, even family, only want us to succeed to what they think is successful. And that can, that can also be a hindrance, whereas I'm coming in and I'm looking at it from the perspective of what is the, what, what's the highest we can go and when we get there, how do we break that and get to the next highest potential um, and I'm coming with that challenge, you know, I'm coming with that uh, accountability, just pure, raw, authentic. And then you get to receive that, take it how you want, and then we get to process it together. And then that's how, I, I think that's how accountability works really well over time. <coughs> Very good, awesome. So we, we covered a lot. In addition to this investment um, that you made with me today, also there's like a, we do like a 30 minute follow up, just making sure we're on, on track to things. If you'd like to work with me, um, I'm also licensed as an insurance agent, so I can also do the, the whole life uh, policies. So if that's something you'd like to uh, work on with me, we can have, again, we'll, we'll have another dedicated call just to that because that's extensive in and of itself with, with whole life. And you're gonna have a bunch of questions and I want you to have a bunch of questions so that you know we can answer them, go kind of line by line. Cool. So we got some action steps. Um, I'm gonna put that email together. And so you should expect that before the day's over. And then, yeah, summary of our call, the action steps that, that we need to take on my end and, and yours, the, the links to the CPA, um, the First Lien HELOC banks, all that. And then I'll put my link to book another call. Beautiful. I'm happy I came through. Um, and I look forward to our next call. Is there anything else before we close out? Absolutely. Yeah, like we're, we're, we're doing it now, like we've started. So <laughs> now it's just sticking with it. Um, do you, so with, with, with mom passing, do you also have uh, dad in your life? Is he still with you? Okay. How is he overall health? Is, is, are you a only, only child or is there others, siblings? Awesome, yeah, I only, I only ask about that just cause it sounds like mom was pretty prepared. He was able to leave some, some inheritance behind for you and siblings. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if dad's all set up or, or if you know or not. Ah, okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. Awesome. Okay, great. Well, well, thank you. Appreciate you, you know, being vulnerable sharing. And again, I look forward to our next call. I'm gonna get to work on putting all this together. All right, have a great day. God bless.